Fire Department, what's the address of the emergency? Uh, well, I'm at 409, uh, 4009 Helen Way, and our mountain in front of our house is on fire, and there we just see the flames. Hey there, it's Kern County. We're breaking a fire in the IA. Okay. It's going to be Earth King Creek Road at Apollo Way. I had just left my house, or was getting ready to leave, and my friend that had left lives in Isabella. She sent a picture of a little fire burning in Isabella. She's like, hey, there, there's a small fire in here. And I said, oh, okay, well, they'll get it out, no big deal. I left mm, 25, 30 minutes after that, and the fire was already in Mount Mesa, which is the next town over from South Lake. Loaded. You couldn't even tell there was a fire burning in Isabella. There was no smoke in South Lake. There was no anything. The second I hit the end of the canyon, I get the the 911, the reverse 911 call to evacuate South Lake. Um, I didn't know the fire was already in South Lake by the time the call went through because there was really just no, it moved so fast, there's no advance notice. And anyone in South Lake didn't get the phone call unless you had Verizon. 90% of these people have AT&T. There was no, no one got that call. I think what kept me the calmest was being pregnant with him, trying to keep calm so that nothing happened to him in the process. She was called, she called hysterical and she's my calm, controlled child. And she's hysterically crying and she said, mom, everything's on fire, it's all burning. I don't know what to do. Luckily, they got out safely. They ended up staying in Kernville because that was the only place up here with reception so that we could contact one another. I was released from the hospital at about 10.30. Um, the first thing I remember seeing getting out of the canyon was the whole mountain in Isabella just on fire to try to figure out what, what's next because we have nothing. We have the clothes on our back. We have this is what's left of a a bracelet that said my son's name, it said Christian. That's all that we found. That's all, out of the whole entire house, that's all we found was just random change. Like all these burnt coins. And then just the loving generosity of people, strangers that I don't even know, donating random things. Like this couch came from somebody. Like at most everything in here, we bought that TV with a, just recently with a card I had been holding onto from the long-term recovery center. We'll always have a home because we have each other. Um, do I miss my ha my home? Yeah, I, I miss my childhood home. I'll always miss it. I was in Idaho visiting my sister and I get a phone call from my daughter saying, there's a fire, we're leaving, the house, everything's burning. There's nothing I can do at your house. They had 15 minutes to get their dog, their cars, uh, medicine, and a little paperwork out. Everything was gone, totally gone. June 23rd was a fire. So it's been seven months and I should be getting in the next couple weeks. So say eight months for me. How it came through just so fast. And that's why I say I'm glad people were able to get out. Just, it takes time, step by step. And you can't get everything all at once. It's very quiet and I know it's gonna fill up. We were out of town, my wife and I, and uh, we got the phone call. We were about 4.30, 5 o'clock in the afternoon is when we got to here. And I came into town because I was out of town when it happened. And my son-in-law called us and said, we're getting out of here now. He grabbed the grandkids and, and left. You know? And uh, everybody was screaming. And, and the fire department was hauling them out of here. They couldn't fight the fire. When we made it through here, about four in the morning, there was nothing here. No people, nothing. They wouldn't let everybody up here. They went around and had to get in. And uh, I just was scared. We didn't, we didn't lose anything. A couple of rain gutters, a couple of taillight windows, and vents, you know. You look next door there. I don't even know where they're at. There was something else involved for us to make it and them not to. I don't know what it was. The way the winds take the fire. Or, I don't know. And then people came back and just, you know, give them a hug. 
What else could you do? South Lake is where you pretty much have about 98% destruction. We have, I've never seen a disaster like this myself. Um, we've never seen one in, in Kern Valley like this. We, we're used to seeing wildfire, and we're used to seeing wildfire, you know, destroy massive, you know, areas of, uh, of mountainsides, and we've seen um, wildfire destroy homes, and, but usually it's, it's one or two or, or, you know, less than a dozen. Uh, we've, nobody ever expected anything like this to happen. You don't expect to see an entire community destroyed, entire blocks just leveled. That's not something that any of us thought, you know, was even a possibility. I was lucky in that my street wasn't harmed in, in, in my little community uh, right next to me wasn't harmed, but um, but still, when you see the the devastation and, and, and the impact on families, you, you can't help but um, just feel extremely sad about it. But the construction phase of it is, is something that we're just now getting a start on. I believe we we will be able to um, rebuild um, and get these these families back into homes and be able to bring them to a, uh, you know, a place of recovery. Our organization uh, provides volunteer labor for disadvantaged survivors of a natural disaster. And there's people here who have needs and we want to see if we can help. By putting people back in homes who might not otherwise build a home uh, helps the community rebuild and get back to some kind of a normalcy. The number we build partly depends on the, the amount of uh, resources or funds available for building materials. Uh, that would be one limitation. We probably would stay as long as there's funds and there's um, eligible survivors who really have a need that qualifies for assistance. When the local community rallies and we come in with disaster volunteer labor and there's resources available, homes get built. and. Um, it's good to see the results and I enjoy doing it. The Erskine fire burned over 48,000 acres of land over 19 days. The blaze was the 15th most destructive in California to date, killing two people and wiping out 309 structures. Months later, officials found the cause to be an electrical line in a tree that had eroded over time and sparked the fire. Firefighters didn't reach 100% containment until July 11th.